Welcome back to Freight Waves Now this morning. And our last guest for the day, we've got the master of maritime shipping himself, Steve Ferreira. Welcome to the show. So tell us a little bit about this fantasy charter rate. Well, I'll tell you what, this is going to be the fastest eight minutes in ocean shipping and maritime <laughs> history. You know, I think I think one of the things that we have to talk about before we get to that, the, the, the incredible charter rates that are taking place is I really want to talk about the split factions that I'm seeing in the marketplace right now that not many people are talking about. I prepared a little chart on this today. And I think what you have to really look at is what is Wall Street looking at? What are internal uh, beneficial cargo owners and importers and merchandisers at the importers looking at? And what are the finance people uh, at the importers looking at? And I think we're seeing a lot of empty shelves. I think I've got some stats for you that are going to blow you away in a few minutes. I, I just think we see an incredible type, type of price gouging here. I think we see a real displacement between beneficial cargo owners and importers um, and vendors, especially those vendors that are now chartering these rates, looking for 15 to 20K ocean, ocean freight rates. So, Steve, we were talking to someone from Steam Logistics here in Chattanooga last week. I think I believe it was about a week ago. And I asked him, I said, is it going to get to a point where these prices that they're charging are, one, kind of on the unethical side in that price gougy range that you just mentioned, or is it just going to keep rising? Are we going to hit $20,000 this summer? Is that something that's feasible? And if it is feasible, is it something that is ethical? Okay, I think we have to take a look at the zombie charters that we're seeing now in the marketplace. I designed this really cool slide, and I think what you're seeing now is, on average, uh, a charter rate to purchase a to lease a container ship is about thirty to thirty five thousand, forty thousand a day. We're now seeing these zombie charters come up, where they're one off charters by freight forwarders, by a tra you know by Chinese freight forwarders, and they're being billed one hundred and thirty five thousand dollars a day from the ship owners now. Even with that and the round trip turn that that the um, freight forwarders can make on these zombie ships, they still make 15 to 18 million dollars in revenue. And so this is really going to, I think, proliferate the fact that inventories are low, shipment sizes are really kind of flat compared to 2019. And I definitely see with the GRIs and the rate restorations that we're going to start hitting that 18 to 20 K rate sometime in July and August. Um, and I'm quite confident because everyone is making such a big push on the back to school uh, seasonality coming up. So right now it's really, really tight because it's really the uh, major importer that's going to be getting that uh, premier space and those that have more deep pockets than the small to intermediate size importer who could be locked out of space this coming holiday uh, and uh, back to school season. Steve, there's been you know, some calls from industry associations to uh, Transportation Secretary, Secretary of Transportation, <coughs> Pete Buttigieg, for him to intervene in this uh, scenario, in this environment. Do you think that will happen? Is this reaching a point where there may be some intervention from the government? Andrew, how do you uh, defuse a nuclear bomb when it's already gone off? Uh, I, I really think, you know, I could sit here and I could uh, pontificate about um, how to plan, how to uh, book in advance, and it would all be BS, right? I mean, let's call it like it is. Whatever's happened and whatever bomb's gone off now, we have to deal with it. And actually, I prepared this issue. Uh, I call, it's kind of play on words, but I have uh, too few moments. We have too few moments to spend together. And it's kind of a TEU, FEU. And I think that um, in the radar right now that clients need to look at is doom and gloom. I, I think that not only are we having rate restoration and GRI, we're also looking at uh, right around the corner, oil is rising. If you look at all the, the different um, uh, oil indis indices around the world, we may be in a position where there's going to be an increase in bunker fuel charges, which is just you know pouring fuel on the fire for these poor importers. I think we have a very strategic issue right now at key ports around the world in Shenzhen, Yantian. We have some COVID slowdown. We still have backlogs of ships in a lot of the key ports around the world, and we're really kind of fighting the tape on that. Kaylee mentioned the 20K rates. I definitely see. I'm the one that came out and said that there'll be 100,000 more containers in July, August, and September this year versus last year. I'm going to be the one that comes out first and says that we, we will see 20K rates, and we're already seeing tremendous GRIs. I think the other thing that we have to keep our eye on the prize is Kaohsiung just had an incident where two cranes were toppled by an OOCL ship sliding into another ship. Kaohsiung, you may not think Taiwan is a strategic load port for cargo X Taiwan, but it's a tremendous port for transshipment. So just when we needed something, some good news, we got more bad news out of Kaohsiung. Last but not least, and I think this is the most exclusive moment I can give you today, 
is factory hoarding. And the reason why I put it like that is that I did a study on 2019 and 2021 on, um, on April to um, April 1 to May 27th of, of each year. I found that the shipment size actually decreased from 2.44 containers of shipment in 2019 to 2.36 containers a shipment in 2021. Now, granted, there's a lot more velocity of shipments, but what this tells me is that big retailers and importers that are strategic in the 10, 15, 20, 30, 50,000 TEU range are really getting the factory production as opposed to the small to medium sized importer that may not be getting that, especially the low end commodity. So I think we, we may see uh, a potential shift to some uh, domestic sourcing on very low end commodity. Although I have a, I have a, um, I have talked to a major retailer, a major importer that said, even if he's paying $15,000 for a plastic bag from China, it's cheaper to import that plastic bag than to source it domestically. Wow. Steve, we've only got a couple minutes here left with you. So one last question for you. You mentioned uh, the situation going on in Yantian, and we talked to Lorian LaRocco about that yesterday as well. She mentioned that with the Chinese government, they may not necessarily give us a full picture of what is actually going on in the port and how it's impacting what's coming out of it. Do you have any additional insight to offer on the situation that's going on there right now? <laughs> Well, I think we know what we know, and we know what, and we can't always predict. Uh, just like uh, the uh, the Wuhan uh, issue with uh, COVID, you know, did the virus leak from a lab or not? I mean, we can't really read into the minds of the Chinese government. But I think one of the there's some great tools out there that we all uh, subscribe to, like marine traffic. I think you know we've got great uh, intelligence coming out of the factories, but uh, it is a little bit cloudy right now there because of the amount of ships in port and just the slowness coming out of there. So. I almost look at that as a, on a scale of one to 10, uh, almost like a level five event in my, um, in my cautionary uh, bag of tricks here. I really think that importers need to really be looking at what's happening in South China ports. And I also may advocate that if they get an opportunity to get on one of these zombie ships, it may not necessarily be the worst idea in the world. Steve, are we gonna see a peak season? What is that? Uh, no, I, I don't see any peak season. I mean, right now we're already talking about back to school and then we'll be talking about Christmas. The lines are so blurred that I just don't see how we go from where we are now to, you know, what would be a traditional peak. I think we're in a chaos uh, uh, price gouge situation now. I think how we react to it, how we recover, how we economize, how we invoke savings, how we get inventory. Um, it's every man to himself, but I don't think we'll see a traditional peak. Yeah, with this with this year's Prime Day, Amazon have going to mm -hmm. do it on June 21st and 22nd, I believe. Last year, if you think back, they did it in uh, in early October. October, and that created a 75-day peak season for the holiday shopping season. I think they're going to create now just an extended uh, back-to-school shopping mm -hmm. season. So I think you're right about that, Steve. I think the demand is going to be very I high. Agree. Thank you so much for your insights today, and I hope you have a great weekend. Go catch you too, guys. Nice afternoon. to see you both. That's right. Go catch a show this afternoon, uh, B2B, uh, Navigating B2B with Steve Ferreira.